I believe, first come, first serve. And as you saw there, you can only put so many people out there at any given time. Yes, but when you can only facilitate and coordinate. <clears throat> when someone makes phone calls right from you know the beginning before this this is even announced, doesn't get a call back. We call the field offices. We try and get on whatever list there exist. We're we're not given any information. We're not on any list, and so mm -hmm. the the disclosure, if you will, that such a list exists or even a process to apply to, you've already chosen three observers. We weren't given that information or opportunity to apply. I have, a, can I ask a question? Did these, have these, first, who are these observers? What are their names? If you could tell me, and were they here in the last couple of days? We can sure find out. And, uh, and that's an effort put together by our, our uh, I believe, our Washington office folks in Reno. We've got a, a cell of Washington folks that work there. And uh, they put that together, and I believe in, in coordination with a number of groups. And the, the intent is that whoever it is, we, they have credibility across, your, whether it's your groups, the public in general, uh, BLM, the government, and so the intent has been to, to put together a group that has credibility that you can feel good about and as any other group can. Um, but we can find out who they are. They've not been on the ground out here, and, uh, and, that, and, it, and that has to do with just setting up the, 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 their availability. I mean, it, it really has been uh, making it come together. Can I? And there's not been anything to observe there's been, um, there's been a lot to yes, observe. Yes, there's been a lot to observe. Like the discovery of the, the emergent situation that we weren't informed about until after a lawsuit was filed out here. That was something very important to observe, was to come out and document the discovery that there was this horrendous drought situation that if the horses were left out there for three days, we'd have a 75% die-off rate, which is what was brought forth in court, which is what you were your representative, your counsel, stated in court. That's quite a discovery. That's, that's some uh, important find on public land that has to do with these horses. We were not part of that. No one was even notified that that even existed out there, and none of that has been documented by the press or the public. There's quite, a, uh, quite an emergent situation, quite an unusual situation. I would call it unprecedented by the way it was presented in court. So there's quite the news story out there. Um, this is an unprecedented emergent situation if we're going to have a 75% die-off in three days if the gather is postponed. And, and uh, absolutely, it and, and Dave, you probably told them that, that we consider this a rescue operation. Mm -hmm. There is yes. no doubt that we have horses that... Which is absolutely <clears throat> newsworthy, and the public really wants to see that. And you're saying these observers have not been out there yet. This, this would be technically day three in this, this, this uh, discovery that's been made um, to document what's going on out there, to see what's going on out there, um, you know, to, towards an end, number one, to help find solutions and help find the resources because we're all aware that you guys are really stretched, okay? So that's number one, which is what, you know, mm -hmm. that has been brought forth before. But this is, this is a huge story out there. Um, we would like to get out there and are very flexible. Even we gathered 228 horses in the first day in two hours. The idea that this gather could end, be over, before uh, something is worked out for us to go out and observe and photograph and bring this unprecedented disaster, if you will, to the public may end before we figure out how to, how to get out there. And, and the real question is, how do we move forward? We can help facilitate us by bringing us to an appropriate viewing spot so that we're not in the way, so that we can view the horses that are in holding and reassure the public that they're being taken care of. Let us view just a little bit of, of, of the gather operation and the conditions of the horses coming in, and then we'll leave. And the glitch there is, although there's, there's, I'm sure there's a way to get close to the gather site on, on public land. I mean, obviously, this is big country, and there's roads in lots of places. Um, 
but I know the terrain, and we could be we standing can ask, here, you could be here, and we won't see yeah. a thing. <laughs> okay. We can ask again the private landowner if he will allow additional folks across Thank their you. land. We can make that request. Okay. And, uh, and, and again, I can, we promise. Where you all might have been or where the advocacy groups might have been, it's not been an issue. As, uh, and so there's right, no reason why this, we wouldn't use it again. Exactly, but choosing this site this time of year does actually create uh, a great issue and concern for the public. And, and I'm sure you are aware, I've been out to that terrain. I've been out there not, I mean, just five weeks ago. And what I saw out there was not what's being represented now. So I'm extremely concerned myself how this drought situation arose so quickly. I'm extremely concerned when I was out there. I saw pregnant mares. There were newborn foals out there. So personally, I have visited that area. Um, we've done a flyover. We did a flyover on the 21st and again observed pregnant mares and foals. And so our concern is really high. Just at Palomino Valley, some of the horses that have been brought in there, we've observed pregnant mares. So we're very concerned that this drought situation exists. Like I said, unprecedented emergency, as it was presented to me through council and court, there's never been a 75% die-off rate that we know of in three days on the range, and that's what was presented, okay? So my concern level, the public's concern level, is much greater perhaps mm -hmm. than it's been in the past, and to perhaps recognize that, and again, we'll go in, we'll follow the rules, we won't be, be we've all been out to the gather site before. I, who, did you want to respond? I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt, and I just did. Who, dis, who discerned the possibility of this die-off rate? Do you know? I yeah, mean, I have the interim report. Thanks. It's a, it's a um, five-member uh, team, okay. and I do have it with me. Thank you. And, and really, it, it's not... The reason why we work to keep um, appropriate management level, we work to get to appropriate management. Okay. <laughs> yes. We'll work to try and. We'll work Did Lieutenant Morton say he was going to be out there? Um, you know, I knew that, that you all were contemplating having somebody out there based on our law enforcement folks talking to you. Okay. And, uh, so but I wasn't sure if it was Lieutenant Morton or somebody else. Yeah. I, he talked to me yesterday about it. Gate me right through here and keep it right. completely. And that's what we're attempting, okay? Okay. Okay. But you Have can't help us. I can't help you. I'm oh, we're, going we're out to meet the BLM representatives right now. Oh, okay. So. By the, should we follow you? Would that, could you, I mean... Well, if you're are gonna you going to go meet them? Are you going? To are you trap? going by the trap? We just, you know, we're not trying to hurt. Where's we're just trying to. I don't know. Uh, the, you're going Neither to go, do I. sir. You're going to go meet the BLM guy right now. I mm. hope to. If you are, can we just follow you because he'll know this map. How far have you been up this road? We didn't go. We didn't go very far. We actually came in this way, thinking. So thinking how far have you been up this road? To the main, to the to the other road. But at what we assumed was that intersection to take us through. That's not <clears> private property. But if you're going to go meet the BLM guy, can we follow you to meet him so that he can tell us how to navigate through here? Because he'll be familiar with this map. It's the BLM map. Can we do that? I mean, you're free to go wherever you want, uh, just as I'm long looking, as it's I'm looking, just not looking, on I'm private asking, property. I'm asking you for assistance. We're so. asking for help. And if you're going to go what, meet the guy who What gave, I'm telling you, ma'am, is I have never been out here. No, but you're going to... I don't know. No, sir, sir, I don't know if they're out this me. way. Or if they're out no, that way. No, you just said you're so, going to go meet the BLM guy. Will you listen to me for a minute? Uh -huh. I don't know if the BLM people are out this way or out that way. So either way, if you follow me or I follow you. Well, I'm, I'm confused. Who knows? Because you just I said thought you, you said you were going to meet the BLM guy. I am meeting the so BLM saying... person. I'm telling you, I don't know if they're out this road or if they're out oh, that so road. So you're searching for them? I'm searching just like you are. <laughs> Yeah, let's, yeah, and as calm and quiet and gently as we can, and then we 